Now, it's my great pleasure to welcome Patrick Baginski, Senior Director of Data Science, and Abni Bath, Director of Data Analytics for McDonald's. McDonald's has been investing deeply in data and AI, and I'm very excited to hear how the Lake House is helping them advance their goals with machine learning. Thank you, Ali, for having us. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Patrick Beginski. I'm the Senior Director of Data Science for McDonald's, and I'm joined here today by my colleague, Abi Bad, Director of Data and Analytics, and particularly uh, interested in the machine learning operations field. We're going to be speaking today a little bit about um, our journey in the um, ML operations and data science space and some of the choices we've made with regards to technology and architecture. But bef I'll, before I dive right into these topics, I wanted to provide a little bit of an overview for those of you who don't know us, which I hope are fairly little. Um, we're, we have, we're, we're essentially in about 119 markets in the world. So uh, that means we have over 4,000 users of our internal um, machine learning operations related solutions. We're informing with those solutions about 39,000 restaurants and ultimately generating about 65 million transactions every day, which means our, our Delta Lake is actually well over a thousand terabytes of data strong. 2020 has really shown corporations and the economy the effect of societal and environmental impacts. And that's why I believe the QSR industry is actually no longer in the age of transformation. That's why I believe we're now in the age of acceleration. QSR, by the way, stands for Quick Service Restaurant Industry, of which McDonald's is a part two. And the way that McDonald's focuses on uh, the importance of accelerating the value from data analytics is by focusing on the, what we call the three Ds, our most strategic topics. The first one is digital. So that means our application, our website and other digital properties. The second one is the delivery business, both with our partners, Uber Eats, Seamless and others, as well as with Mac Delivery, our own delivery service. And then lastly, the drive-through experience in which we're also building data analytics solutions. And so based on that, uh, now is really the time for us to essentially rapidly develop data analytics functions. And how we're doing this is we, we actually started with a small team about two years ago of only five to 10 people, engineers, data scientists, analysts. But now we have grown to actually over 45 people and we started using open source technologies in order to deliver value from data science solutions. Now at McDonald's, we, we are in a hybrid cloud environment because markets operate slightly differently from each other. So that means that each market can have a different choice of cloud. And that's also why we invested in open source and other technologies that make it easiest for us to manage, deploy and build data science solutions. And the reason why we're doing this is actually ultimately to really accelerate the time to value across, operate, across our operations. And when I say time to value, what I mean by that is the time it takes for a data scientist to launch an experiment, prove value from that experiment, and then also move it into production with the help of my colleague, Abi Bad, who is leading our ML operations team. Some of those examples of what we're working on is for example, store forecasting, fine-grained SKU level forecasting, we're building recommender systems, we're working on drive-through automation, and then a lot of typical marketing related topics such as customer lifetime value, churn reduction, segmentation, but also supply chain, restaurant operations, and food safety topic. And with that, I'm now gonna hand it off to Abi, who will speak to you in more detail about our ML operations. Thanks, Patrick. Hello, everyone. My name is Abi Bhatt, and I'm the Global Director for Data and Analytics at McDonald's. I'm excited to talk about machine learning and Databricks journey at McDonald's with you today. In 2020, we went through a platform or a tool selection for our data science and machine learning users. And clearly Databricks was our top choice. We, we selected Databricks based on a few key reasons. They are, one, Databricks is, and it has a really easy deployment model where I can take the software and I can deploy it in my own cloud platform and keep the data and the infrastructure secured. So that, make, that enables us to do all of the data science 
workloads and setup and keep the data and the infrastructure and the platform secured. Second, Databricks as a platform provides the flexibility to the end users to bring the language of their choice. They could bring, they could do their work in Python, Spark, or PySpark, or even just basic SQL. So depending upon the, the maturity of the user, the platform can address different languages and make it easy for them to adopt or come to the platform. Third, uh, I truly look at Databricks as an integrated lake house platform with capabilities such as Delta Lake, MLflow, and Databricks SQL, which makes it really easy to build models and scale them. So as you can see from the visuals shown, we bring in a variety of data into the Databricks platform. We bring in data such as our store transactions, our mobile app data for loyalty, customer, customer marketing data, and also look at some uh, third party or open source data as well to bring in. And as within the platform, then the data science folks build a variety of different models such as uh, lifetime value of the customer, product recommendation, demand forecasting, et cetera. These models then get consumed by either a front end application, which the end users can call and have an, in, an interactively call the, the models or it could be as simple as the, the model output gets written into something, in, you know, like into a table and gets consumed through a report or a dashboard in Tableau. So with that, I truly believe that with Databricks as a technology and the partner, we are on the right track of our ML ops and data science journey. Let's talk a little bit more about ML ops as that's gonna be our key focus for 2021 and is a hot topic in the industry right now. I truly believe that building data science models is hard, but scaling and operationalizing them is even harder at a global scale of ours at McDonald's. So here, and here's how we are thinking about it. It all starts for us on how do we bring the data into the platform? The way we do it is we bring in all the data into an S3 bucket where Delta Lake is enabled. As you folks may know, Delta Lake is a storage format that helps us do data versioning and also build scalable and performant feature engineering pipelines in the platform. Next, we look at version control of our code. We use, we, today we use a combination of Git and, our, and, and repos as repos will extend and make it really easy to manage code directly from the Databricks uh, workspace itself. Next, once the models are built, uh, the data scientists folks go through model experimentation. And this is done through MLflow experiment, which enables tracking of model parameters, evaluation matrix, such as accuracy, recalls, or precision, and, lo and, we, log model and, and we log model artifacts for each run. Next, as we as we have selected the final model and are ready for deployment, this is where again, using ML flow registry, we manage the life cycle of the model to go from staging to production or to archive. And essentially get, gets, it, uh, gets the model ready for serving. So when we go to model serving, we think about this in two patterns. One is on-demand batch scoring, and the second is an early inference using SageMaker uh, endpoints. Now we are also exploring Databricks serving capabilities, which are just coming up. And I'm excited to see how that also can help us um, streamline model serving through this platform. Now, once the model is served, we wanna make sure that we are catching the drift or measuring the quality of the model as well. In this case, we are using a combination of um, SageMaker monitoring uh, capabilities, which are very generic for, for, for measuring the quality of the model, and also for building custom KPIs using PySpark in the Databricks platform itself. So overall, how all of this comes together, I truly believe that this is a best-in-class solution um, for ML ops put in place using Databricks, uh, MLflow, as well as Delta Lake, and even AWS SageMaker. Next, let, let's see what the numbers tell us. You know, as, as we talked about, we started our MLOps journey in 2020, but within less than nine months, we have gone from zero to production scale of MLOps, of, uh, of scaling of the models. 
And within this nine months or less than nine months, we've not only identified the tool, the technology, done the legal paperwork, which can always be a hassle, uh, but also identified use cases, built the models and deployed them. We've enabled more than 15 use cases with 30 plus models de deployed in five plus countries or markets in which we operate. Uh, multiple ML deployment frameworks have been built for the data science and the end users to ensure that we have the right security in place for, for building and deploying models. Uh, we built CI CD pipelines, especially for deploying the models, and we will continue to enhance these frameworks. As you can see from a platform usage perspective, we have used about 130,000 DBU units, which is Databricks units, uh, which is great for Databricks. Um, and from a compute perspective, we are about 27,000 compute hours on a monthly basis in AWS. And you know, while these numbers may look impressive, they are not for a scale of McDonald's. We anticipate that in 2021 and beyond, these numbers are exponentially gonna grow at least by four to five times. And that will be when we are truly at scale doing MLOps at McDonald's. Next, let us share a little bit of our findings from our journey in, in data science and machine learning. And, and truly the first point I, I would like to hit upon is that this is truly a journey for us of continuous improvement as well as learning. There's always gonna be new data sources, new models or enhancements that have to be in place or skill sets that are needed. So always think about it as a continuous improvement journey. Next, identify the right technology and the tool set so that it provides greater, it, it provides flexibility to your end users to either bring in a custom model of their choice or even do basic SQL-like stuff in the platform, right? And I think that's, that's kind of what has helped us a lot to go with Databricks in that direction. Third, if you are building a new team or want to retain your team, it, it takes time to find and build, uh, find and get new resources. Uh, so make sure you have a good hiring plan, as well as if you're a consultant friendly company, uh, ensure that your team is supplemented by consultants. And when you look at the skill set of your team, it's not just the data science folks or the data engineering folks. ML engineers and engineering is very critical as you go and scale your models or think about ML ops. So don't forget about those resources and skill sets. Uh, and last but not the least in this case, I would call out is on the platform capabilities and technology changes. They are changing really rapidly. Um, so being agile is critical, not just in your thinking, but also in ensuring that is the architecture and the solutions that you have in place so that you're always able to stay up and stay ahead of the curve and provide the best solutions and platforms to your teams. So if you look at folks, we have talked about why we selected Databricks. Uh, how are we thinking about ML ops and, and kind of shared our findings. And as I mentioned before, this is truly a journey and the journey continues for us. And for this part, uh, I will hand it over to Patrick who will take us on what are we gonna, where do we go next and what does what is this part of the journey looks like for us? So thank you. Thank you, Abi, for the deep dive on machine learning operations. Now our journey truly does continue as, as Abi mentioned. And so uh, I hate to use buzzwords, but one thing we're truly trying to do is continue to democratize machine learning and data science practices across the company using largely out of the box capabilities and builds, right? And as a, as a consequence of that, we also want to continue educating and providing learning opportunities to our teams, to the markets, to the different people that are part of the McDonald's system. We wanna enable more end-to-end -end automation and machine learning operations in general. And so I spend about an hour to two hours every week talking to startups and new ideas to find out what is the best path forward, particularly, particularly when it comes to machine learning operations. And we wanna to continue to implement government governance and also cost control measures in order to make sure that what we're doing from a business perspective continues to make sense. And last but not least, you know, very importantly, we want to continue to learn and actually have fun along the way too. So what does that really mean for us at McDonald's? So we, we have a bit of a value acceleration roadmap now that we have the Databricks platform as a tool in our, in our box. 
Uh, these are the just three that I'm mentioning here. I mentioned and talked about it before already. We're going to do some very fine grained SKU level forecasting uh, for our restaurants. We're going to continue to try to automate marketing and personalization related activities beyond just good machine learning for marketing, but actually using some unsupervised and potentially even reinforcement learning techniques in order to further automate the end to end interaction with customers through offers. And lastly, if you're doing this, you also want to have the cross-channel measurement and cross-channel performance measurement done right, and even the ability to be able to measure across markets, restaurants, and marketing efforts, what, how we, we are essentially performing with our marketing offers. And um, before I wrap up here, first of all, thank you, everybody, for joining the talk. I do want to mention briefly, our teams are still hiring at McDonald's. So you should be able to find a couple open job postings via my LinkedIn profile and the McDonald's career page. Um, and with that being said, I'll hand it back over to you, Ali.